Hello my frugal artists, thank you so much for checking out my new video today. I have to tell you, coming up is the biggest project I have ever done. This is a three foot by four foot canvas and I will take you through all the steps of it. How I leveled it to begin with, how I prepared the canvas, how I poured everything and messed it up and started halfway over. But I am super, super excited to share this whole project with you today. It's been a lot of fun to work on, and I hope that you really enjoy it as well. Here we go. Hello everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here, and this is part five of my five part video series where I have been doing test paintings to come up with a plan for a client who would like a large piece done. I have shown my test paintings to the client and now we're onto the large piece. Right now, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to level a piece of art so that your resin doesn't go in places you don't want it to. It didn't matter as much in my tiny pieces, but it matters on this big one because this is big, this is heavy, this is a lot of work and a lot of money's worth of resin, so we got to get it right. I've got a three foot by four foot canvas here in front of me, and I've already taped the bottom of this, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to level it. I've got a giant level here. We had this in our garage already, but this is something that you absolutely should get and would be worth getting if you're going to do pieces this size, and I will link you to this in the comment section below. But what I've done is laid my level out to make sure that this thing is level on its own. And then I've added two tiles in each edge here to check my level going each direction because when I flip this over, I need to have a tiny bit of space off the floor for my resin to drip off so I don't, you know, just have this sitting on the floor and then have all the resin stick to everything. You don't need a lot of space, just a little. These tiles I got for $2.99 for an eight pack at Goodwill and they're nice thick stone tiles so I might only need one even to get it off the floor I'm just testing right now but all of my tiles are the same size and this is all nice and level right now here's the deal when I flip this over even though this is level and I purchased a level three canvas which is professional level canvas from Michaels I used the 20% off coupon and they were having a sale because of the holidays but this is an $85 canvas normally. So I got like 25% off of it. You want a level three because, I'll show you a corner here, the actual canvas itself is made better. So normally you'd have one piece of wood frame and the canvas would be wrapped around it and stapled in. This has a second interior frame that's even thicker, holding not only the canvas in place, but keeping the structure of this more stable and you just have to have a really stable structure with how heavy resin is. So this is absolutely something splurge on level three. Level one, you can get them this size, but they're gonna be really flimsy. That being said, resin is so heavy, even though this is great, it's got a nice sturdy cross brace. This is such a wide canvas that it's going to dip somewhat because of the weight of the resin. So the reason I have this all set up upside down to test my level is that I've got a bunch of magazines here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them in either side underneath once this is flipped over and I want to get this perfectly level as well so that I know how many magazines to put underneath so that it just gives enough of a hold in side of this interior to not have the whole canvas sag. I hope that makes sense but I'm going to see how many this takes and then what I'll do is I'll check the level with only one side instead of both and see if we're still level with the magazines. Right now, this is going to take quite a few magazines, so I think what I'm going to do is get rid of one tile and only have one tile holding up each of these. It will be in the corners, holding up each of the corners. Alright. So... Right now, 
I'm just about there. What I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to take it off of that side and only do it on this side to check my level. Do one more. And that is perfect. So I'm exactly level. I've got quite a number of magazines here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I hope this makes sense how I've got this all set up. But, um, oh, I'm also, I'll show you, I'm going to check this direction to make sure that I'm level when I'm going this way so that I don't have anything at a weird angle or anything. Okay, so we will check all of these real quick and then I will um, flip this over. I'm also going to tape the edges. The client decided they want painted edges with a kind of a fun little twist that I'll show you later in the video, but I am going to uh, tape the edges as well. I'm not leaving a lip. I'm going to let the resin run over the edges, but I don't want the edges to have resin on them. The last thing real quick here is that I've got a big piece of vinyl underneath this whole thing and I'm doing this right on the floor because there's not really any other good way to do it. It's too much for me to put it on any of my tables. I don't have a big enough table to pour on. So that would add a whole other level of uh, trying to get things even and level as well. So I've got vinyl underneath. It's a little short. I might add an extra little piece of it just on one end, but it shouldn't. I shouldn't be dripping too much off of the edges, so it should be just fine. And I'm also on an old ratty piece of carpet that if it gets messed up, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna make sure both sides are level, get it all figured out, and then I'm gonna flip the whole thing over, tape my edges, and from there, once I know everything is level, I will start the design of this final gigantic piece. My canvas is now completely level. It is flipped over so that I can start working on it. And I've also taped the edges right up to the very edge here because again I'm going to let a little bit of resin spill over but I don't want resin on it. I did find out that the canvas itself, the frame was a tiny bit warped and this one corner was a little too low but not enough for me to add a whole other of those stone tiles. So I also had some of these extra thin ceramic tiles and that ended up when I stuck that underneath the stone tile making this whole thing level. When you do your leveling, check the middle, check it like this, check it diagonally, check the edges, check all over the place till you know it's absolutely level because otherwise your resin is absolutely going to go where you don't want it to go. The person that has commissioned this piece chose the style of the very first piece in this series that looked like this, but we're going to do a few different things with it. We're going to go for the color scheme that's in the fourth painting that I did that looked like this. She also liked from that fourth painting how I had used the glue and the paint to kind of contain all the stones and where they all go so that it wasn't just a big jumble of colors. So my plan is to start just like I did before. I'm gonna glue gun lines in and then paint them with my enamel paint. This is gonna take forever. <laughs> So I'm going to speed it up really fast. The one tricky thing is now that this is level, I can't keep spinning it around to draw. I need to go ahead and move myself around to where I want things to go. I'm going to use a pencil to kind of draw in some of the lines I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to go over them with my glue gun. Because this has to be way more precise than all of my test paintings, I'm actually going to do two whole layers of glue lines. So once I've gone through and done it once, I'm going to go and do a second layer right on top so that they're taller so that I don't have resin migrating between different sections. I won't show you that second time through because it won't be interesting. <laughs> um, but I'm going to do all of those and then after that I'm going to paint all of my lines and from there I'm going to talk about how we're going to do the edges. She chose to have me paint the edges with gold enamel paint, but just like that fourth picture, here it is one more time. Instead of letting all of the resin pour over and cover the edges, we're going to have the glass cover the edges and then still paint gold in between. So it's going to be kind of a cool mix that we haven't tried before. I thought of it just as we were talking and thought it would look really neat. So after I do all my glue lines. I'm also going to need to glue stones onto the edges. I've 
done both layers of my glue, which took a significant amount of time. And the next thing I'm going to do is just in previous videos, I'm going to use Tester's brand enamel paint in silver and in gold. This is paint used for model airplanes and cars and things like that. And I'm going to paint over the top of these lines. There's an easy way to do this. I dip my brush in and I hold it sideways and just run along the tops of all the lines. I'm going to do gold and silver because I'm putting two different colors of stones inside these lines. I've actually cut out the tape inside of these portions of glue because what I'm going to do is let the stones go over the edge. So I think it's going to be a really cool look when I'm done with all of it and I'll show it to you closer when I get into it further. But if you notice that I am painting lines over the side, that's why. So I'll speed this up. I'm going to use my gold and silver testers paint and we'll get going. Right, all of my lines are painted on the edges as well as on top. As I said before, I have cut out the tape in the places where these glass sections are going to go. And so now before I can start pouring resin on the edges, I'm going to use my glue gun and glue some of the glass down. I am using a silver and a blue, just like a denim kind of blue kind of crushed glass. These are from Michaels for $4.99 each. And um, again, if you can get them with the 20% off coupon that they always have, but I am going to be putting the blue inside my silver lines. And then this silver, it's really more of a clear and it's even got a tiny bit of a yellowish tint to it. So I like it with the gold. I'm going to be putting those in the gold lines. So all the way around the edges here, I'm going to glue these in with my glue gun. And then when I pour clear resin in and put the actual stones in the lines, I will also let that resin run through what I've glued so that it sticks it down permanently. All right, I finished gluing the glass pieces onto the edges here. And right now all I'm doing is dumping like this. I'm dumping glass into all of these spaces. And I'm not going to record this because you don't really need to see it, but I'm going to pour clear resin through all of these so they all stick down and let it cure overnight and then we'll start getting to pour some of our really neat colors. I have finished putting all of my glass down. I'm going to give you a close-up here. I laid my glass first and then I poured resin over the top of it and I let that cure for a while and then I went back and I poured more resin on top and then sprinkled more glass on top so that I had pieces 
that definitely didn't have resin over the top of them and that would shine really nicely in the light. And then I took a dry paintbrush and brushed over all of my glass so that any loose pieces would fall off. I'm gonna give you a close up here of the edge, like I said. Basically, I took my glue gun and I glued every single little piece of glass on all the way around this, which ended up taking me about six hours. So all of the edges, all of these lines of glass that you can see wrap over the edges. And so it was about six hours to glue all that on. And then when I poured my resin, I poured it over the edges so that this glass is stuck down with the resin as well. And so that it's more permanent. Here is the other thing I did to give you a up close version. I actually um, cut with a knife right along my glue lines and then left the tape in the other places. So again, my edge is gonna be painted with the same gold enamel paint that I used to paint those lines. I'll show you how deep those are as well. I don't have my glue lines completely painted, but I'm not worried about that because my next step while I pour the resin is going to cover up that bottom part. I did have a little trouble leveling. I ended up, just because of life in general, um, not being able to get right back to this after I did the glass part. And what that ended up making me do was leaving this sitting with just the glass, which was actually good because what happened was the weight of the glass kind of sagged my canvas a little bit. So I can show you in the end, but I'm already level again and don't wanna <laughs> make that not the case by picking up this canvas to show you. Basically what I did was I bought some new styrofoam, left the magazines under there like I had them, but I cut the styrofoam bigger. So there's styrofoam under almost every bit of this now and I've re-leveled it so I've got it super flat. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my gloves on and get my mask on and I'm gonna start pouring. My plan for pouring is that I'm gonna do some really thick swabs of base color, so white with powder pigment in it and a couple of other solid colors, some of my very light blue, some gray, and I'm gonna actually let that go all over, mix together, and then I'm going to go back and add thinner lines that are going to mix in as well. Gold and uh, the person that I made this for, even though teal was not one of their colors, they liked this more kind of denim blue and then light blue. She liked the teal that ended up in one of my test pieces and wondered if I could just put a tiny bit of it in to add some brighter color to her living room. So I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to pour as much. So this is a lot of mixing coloring the resin, pouring, mixing again, coloring, pouring, because this piece is so big, I don't really have the capability of mixing it all at once without things curing too quickly. So I will speed this up. I'm going to start pouring and mixing, and you will just get a very quick view of me pouring the first layer, and then we'll go on from there.
quite a while since I poured the last part of this video because life happens and I've been busy with quite a few other things. So now I'm coming back to this painting and now is the deadline. I got to get moving quickly because the person that ordered this is going to be back from their vacation soon and will be ready to pick it up. I don't know how much you can see in the video, but I have lightly sanded this entire surface so that when I go to pour my next layer, it will stick better. I had one issue over in this area where I believe when I was mixing my clear resin and my colored resin to pour everything on, I accidentally dripped either part A or part B of the resin over here and didn't realize it. So I had a couple little sticky spots here. So off camera, I have gone back and actually just poured a tiny bit of clear resin over this section and now that's fine and I've sanded it as well. So everything is ready for me to get, now get to do some really fun colors. I also had to go back and re-level everything. I switched to a tiny level and I have gone all over the place and any possible angle I can to make sure this is all level. I did have one area here, I believe because it sat so long where this glass was just so heavy that it kind of sagged the whole canvas down. So even though my entire piece has those big pieces of foam underneath it, I had one skinny white subway tile that I ended up putting right under this section to just pull that up so that it was level and not dipping down too low. During the last part of the video, you might have noticed I kept reaching underneath. Because this piece is so big, I realized after I poured this last section that I couldn't tip the whole thing very well to get the colors to move because the, it's just too big. It was going to go all over the place. So what I did instead was I wadded up different little balls of paper towel and grabbed some of my tiles and stuck them in random places so that it was uneven and so that things would move around. So obviously I stuck a high point here so that everything went that way. Over there I stuck it that way. Over here it was high so it went that way. So that's how I kind of achieved the mushing of the colors that usually I would do by just tilting the whole canvas. This piece is just already too heavy. I did go ahead and weigh it just to see where I was at and I'm already at 11 pounds. So I just have to uh, <laughs> make sure that if I want to move resin around I don't have to do it by lifting the whole canvas. The next thing I'm going to do that I'm really excited about is using all the same colors as last time. I am going to pour a second layer but instead of having clear all over the place for the colors to run. I'm going to pour the colors on individually and not have them move quite as much. I might use my blow dryer or heat gun just to push them around a tiny bit, but because these colors were intentionally so mushy and so light and so kind of vague around the edges, I want my next layer to have a little more definition. Now that being said, I want there to be all different types of lines. So these really mushy, undefined lines were the first layer. I want the second layer to be more defined, but I don't want it to be so defined that it would look the same as when I go back and draw acrylic paint lines on the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is do my lines, and then if there are some that, even if I've kind of moved them around, I want them to mush further with a few of them, I might go back and then pour clear right next to them and let them mix into the clear, but only have the clear be a small line. Just I'm just using this as an example. Um, if I had like a blue and a clear so that they can mush, but they still aren't going to spread everywhere because I'm not going to have resin covering the entire surface during this section. I showed you a picture at the last section of what I'm using, but just real quickly, I'll show you. I have uh, Perlex powder pigments in duo blue green and in macro pearl. I already mixed the macro pearl in with my white just to give the tiniest little bit of sparkle, but now I'm going to put a much larger concentration of this into my resin so that they're really nice and sparkly. Now if you decide to use this duo blue green, it is very blue green. Right now this looks very blue, almost navy, like the same color of my glass. When you mix this in resin, it will absolutely turn a tealish green. The colors that are in my client's home are gray, this gray, silver, gold, um, and then this blue and also a uh, cream color. It's their couch, it's their, their new home design. So I had done all of those test pieces and I might have mentioned in the videos that one of those test pieces came out way too teal compared to what their home decor looks like. 
With that being said, the homeowner, she really actually liked that teal, even though they don't have teal in most of their house. So she requested that I add just a little bit of teal into this, maybe some of the smaller lines, because she just loved the color and wanted it to pop. So I'm going to add a little bit of that teal, but just, just be aware, if you use this, it is not blue. It is definitely a blue green. I'm also using Tester's brand enamel paint. This is the paint that you use for model ships, model airplanes. It's in the model section of most craft stores. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know I am kind of obsessed with these. I love these because they really do look like liquid gold and silver. Um, so I'm going to be using those just like I did on the lines, but I'm going to mix them right into my resin and pour. Now, the one thing I'm going to be careful with is because this type of paint is different than acrylic paint, it will, for some reason, rise to the top of the resin. So if you have a large space, say I did one of those, like a gold line and a clear line, and it mixed, it would end up coating the entire thing and just be this big chunk of gold because it'll float to the top of the resin. So I'm going to intentionally pour much smaller lines when I use the gold and the silver, and I'm going to not mix them with clear. If I like that they are doing something weird, next to one of the other colored lines, I might let them mush together a little, but I don't want these to be too much of the painting. So I've also got gray. I am not going to be using gray by itself because I have silver for that. I like the silver look better and I feel like gray wouldn't quite match with my tan colors and things in this. But what I'm going to do is add a little bit of gray to my uh, two blue, my apple barrel two blue, just to make it a little darker. So it's a little more like this glass and not quite so royalish blue. I actually don't know that I'm going to use any khaki in this one because the khaki under here, this is almost, it looks kind of like butterscotch and it looks delicious. But um, I, I just feel like with the gold and with my brighter colors now as the next layer, khaki might just stay a nice background color. And then the white, I don't really need for this layer. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to need it anymore or not. The only way I would use the white right now is if one of my colors looks too dark, I might add a little bit to it. The one other thing I did was after sanding, because when you sand things out, you get rid of most of the imperfections, little air bubbles and things. But for some reason, I had just in a couple spots, a few deeper, like darker dots that didn't seem to match. I don't know if it was something that got into my resin or what, but they didn't sand out easily. So I took my white Posca pen this is the same type of pen I'll be using to draw my lines at the end, but I took one of these and I just colored over the white in a couple little spots where I saw some dots that I didn't like. So just like last time, I'm going to get my mask on and my gloves on and everything, and I'm going to start pouring and we'll speed it up. And this is my favorite part. This is my favorite, favorite part of doing these, this layer, because it takes the piece from like, oh, I kind of get the idea of what this is going to look like, To Whoa, this looks fabulous. All right, here we go.
All right. I'm so excited about how this piece is turning out. I decided, obviously, as I was going along, to go ahead and add the gold and silver right into everything else. I think it turned out good, and I'm happy with uh, how using the heat gun, I've kind of mushed some sections together. From where you're at, I'm assuming you can probably see these spots that have no resin, right in here, here, over here, no new resin, because they're probably not as shiny. I am totally, totally fine with that. I actually really like that. I'm going to let this cure, and then I'm going to draw on all of my tinier lines with my pens, and when that's all finished, pour a clear coat and sign it, and then at the very end, I will peel all the tape off the edges and paint the edges gold. So, yay! I'm super excited with how this looks, and we'll come back to it again tomorrow. Here's where I'm at on this painting so far. After letting this dry, although I love the look of it because it's a style I would choose, I've been thinking a lot about the fact that the people I'm making this for have a much more streamlined look to their house, and I really think that I need to tone this down quite a lot. I was going to completely start over <laughs> and pour over the top, but what I do like are some of these sections, like right here, where I have some more muted colors. And let's see, over in this area where there's a lot of white and some good sparkles in the white and things like that. I know it's hard to see um, from the video. But anyway, I don't want to get rid of it completely, but I do need to really tone this down a lot. So what I'm going to do is draw more lines where I want my resin to go and add some more solid colors so this isn't quite so crazy looking. The lines I'm drawing are going to be with my glue gun so that when I pour, I have very distinct areas where the resin's gonna go and where it's not gonna go. A couple things to note, as I poured the second layer, there are spots that I didn't cover. So like, I don't know if you can see in here is lower. This whole thing is not even right now. The other reason it's going to be important for me to do more glue gun lines is that I don't want in some of those spaces where the resin's lower, I don't want my solid colors to pool and move around in ways that I'm not expecting. So I'm going to cover over half of this and I know oh, on the one hand that's very daunting, but on the other hand, I think it's gonna look a lot better for what the people that I'm making this for want it to look like. I went and sanded the top of this lightly so that the next layer would stick, but because I'm recovering so much of it, what I also did was I took my straight razor blade, see if I can hold my camera while I'm doing this, and I just scratched all over this thing. I don't know if you can see that real well. And then I also took the flat part and scraped like this. It's going to give you some curly resin bits. You really have to be careful to not inhale this. And I hope you're wearing protection as you work with resin. But what this did was it scratched up even more uh, my surface so that the next layer is going to stick, but also sanding completely throws even tinier dust particles into the air that are super unsafe to breathe in. And so doing it this way by scraping the surface, you're still making a rough surface. That's obviously a very rough surface, looks terrible. It'll disappear when the next layer goes on. But it also allows me to clean up without having resin particles in the air that I can breathe in. So I am not going to film every little clear line that I make here with my glue gun because that's going to be annoying to watch and this is already a long video. But what I'll do is I'll put them in and I might paint over them with my enamel paint just like I did with all of these lines right here because it will look pretty when it's done. But for the most part, <laughs> I'm definitely going to cover all the blue in here. I don't like how the blue turned out. It's too bright. Kind of looks like denim jeans and they're their blue is more like the glass, and I feel like this grayish blue matches, but this just does not match right. So I bought a new paint color uh, called Inky Night from Target for $2, and that is more what I'm going for. And I am going to add some of my Perlex pigment powder to it so that it's sparkly, and I'm going to pour it that way in some spots, and then in other spots I'm going to add my uh, Duo Blue Green because the customer said she wanted a little bit of teal in there. And I'm gonna let those two colors 
touch each other and mix together a little bit. So we're very much going to change the look of this whole piece. It's taking forever and it's costing a lot in resin, but um, it's a big commission as well. So I will recoup uh, my money plus some, but you know, it does take out of the la you know final overall profit. So I'm going to dust this off because I've got some of these little curly bits of resin where I've scraped things. And then I'm gonna draw some glue gun lines and then I will record once it's done and show you what I drew and the next thing that I pour. As you can see, I drew more lines with my glue gun, kind of following some of the natural spaces that were created during the pour. I am going to now actually start pouring more resin. Some of the spaces I'm going to leave, some of these sections, this like this middle section right here, it's a lighter color all the way through there and colors that are going to match. All of the sections with that bright blue are going. But each area, like this big section here, that's going to stay because it looks nice. So I'm going to pour, but before I pour, I'm going to do an undercoat of paint, the acrylic paint that I will use to tint the resin that's going in each section. I'm just going to do a real thin layer of the paint itself so that, especially for the white or some of my lighter colors, I don't see some of these other things underneath. So I will speed that up and you'll get an idea of what this is going to look like because the lines that I paint will show where my pour is going to go. I'm done painting in these sections. Obviously a lot of this paint looks terrible, but all I'm trying to do is get enough of the solid color that I'm going to use over the colors underneath so that they don't show through. There will still be a layer of really solidly colored resin over all of these. The next thing I'm going to do after this paint dries is grab some sticky note tabs and put a tab in each color that I'm going to pour first. Now, I loved that all these colors mixed together, but I want these colors to be more solid and not as mixed together in the lines. So what I'm going to do is go through and choose which colors to pour first and which ones to wait on. So for instance, I will probably go ahead and pour this gray 
and then use my tool to push it toward the gold and then to push it right along the edge of where this gray paint color is. And I'll go ahead and do the white and I'll do the sparkles in here, but I won't do the blue yet. I'll wait at least 12 hours till the other colors are really tacky and aren't gonna move. And then I will pour the blue so that I have some nice solid colors in between everything. The thing is, I can't just pour like all the blue at one time and then all the gray at one time and all the tan at one time because they're in different positions. What I'd like to do in some of these trickier spots, like in this area, is I'll probably pour my white first because once that is all set, it'll be easy to get the tan color right in there in between the white that's already raised up and the silver that's already raised up. So I'm just trying to make it easier for myself in the long run. So anyway, I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna go through and put sticky tabs in the places that I'm going to pour first. One other quick thing, because of the layer I had poured before this, before I decided to change the design, I don't have a flat surface. I have some spots where things are raised and lowered. This is one of them. I also have one over here that's not a different color. I am really excited to use this. I went to Michael's and with a 20% off coupon, I got these two glitters. The brand of these is Createology, which is a Michael's brand. They were $5.59 each, 20% uh, off. One is a copper colored set of sparkles that I think will look really nice along with this deep navy kind of blue. The other is um, like a white kind of iridescent rainbow sparkle. And so what I'm gonna do is in a few of these pockets, put some of these sparkles as part one. So like the white sparkles here and here and here, and I'm gonna do some over there just to add a neat little bit of color. And then I'm gonna do the copper in a few of these other spots. Then when I'm ready to pour my last layer of resin before the top coat, I'm gonna make a few lines with these as well, just to add some real like oomph to the whole thing. So I'm going to let these dry, grab my sticky tabs, and then I will change into my clothes, my face mask, my gloves, and then I will start doing some more resin. All right, I've got all of my sticky tabs in the spots that I'm able to do resin with now, which is most of them. So that's great because I have a lot of time tonight. Kids are in bed and I'm gonna start pouring and take my time with it. As I pour each section, I'll take the sticky tabs off. I don't wanna take them, any of them off too soon just to make sure I didn't miss pouring any tonight because 12 hours later, once things are sticky, I don't want to realize that I missed something and not be able to pour a color and then have to wait an extra 12 hours for anything. Just because I'm excited about the glitter, <laughs> I'm going to start with that and do the glitter in all the little tiny spots and make some glitter lines and some of my spots like this one and just see how it all turns out. So this is going to be a long process. I'm going to fast forward and let you enjoy and we'll see how it looks after this step is complete.
Okay, I think I am done for tonight. I made a couple of changes in terms of what I was gonna do first versus second as I was going. And I need to now let this cure enough that the colors are not gonna mix when I pour the next one. So at least 12 hours from now, but we will come back and pour the other half of the stripes and the colors tomorrow. All right, it's been about 18 hours since I did this last pour. I have a couple spots that made me crazy some navy that got into my glass here that I'll be able to clean up. It's just another step because everything's taken twice as long in this project as I've expected. So things are not completely cured yet, but they're just the tiniest bit tacky. So this is plenty of time for me to wait and now my colors won't mix or run or anything. So I am going to just continue on like I had. The one thing I'm going to change is I loved how these sections I created with my glue gun and these spots here, I put my glitter in these, the, the uh, really shimmery glitter, and then I kind of poured it in a few spots. Uh, I like the coppery glitter all over. I don't like this more rainbow glitter everywhere. And um, since I have to do a few other pour spots, I'm gonna go ahead and pour over that just because I think um, I, I think they're really cool. It almost looks like the stone opened up or something and there's like, you know, like opal or something inside. Since I like that part, but don't like it all over and I'm gonna pour over some of it, what I'm gonna do is try to see if I can come up with a couple more spots to make a few more of these little things with my glue and my paint. And so I'm thinking um, maybe one along here, basically just to balance it out because there's some down here. I want to do some in this area. So real quickly, I'm going to add those with my glue gun. And then after I do that, we'll do the next pour. I am super excited to be nearing the end of this project, finally. I'm sorry the camera angle is a little weird. I've got my whole piece up on a card table right now because I just do not have it in me to squat down on the floor to paint all of these little individual lines. I am using Posca pens 
and I am using them in ultra fine in white, gold, and silver. And I am just going to have fun with this part. I'm going to add lines all over the place. I always seem to want to add too many, so I might pause as I go just to make sure I'm not getting a little too crazy with it. But this thing is cured. I think I accidentally missed recording this last blue line for you guys, but it was the last thing I poured. Everything's cured and um, I'm going to paint on my lines. And then after that, I have to paint the edges gold and I'll give you a quick close up on that when I get to it. And then from there, we're doing a clear flood coat over the entire thing. And this will finally be done. So I'm going to draw some lines. We'll speed it up and then I will show you how I'm painting my edges. Just a quick note, whenever you are using these paint pens, I like to start them on some paper or cardboard. This is just the back of one of my paintbrush sets just to make sure that everything is coming out and flowing well so I don't have any spots on my actual piece of art that there isn't the right amount of ink.
All right, I think I am done drawing lines. I am stopping here because I feel like I could keep going and going and going, and I probably shouldn't. So this piece is almost done. I've got my signature down here in the corner. I have told you this in other videos before, but if you haven't seen my other videos, I definitely say sign the front of your art. You have worked very hard on it. It should absolutely have your signature on display. But at the same time, you don't want to sign it in a way that's distracting. So I chose to do silver on white. I would definitely not want to do like silver on blue or something. But it's right there in the corner. It'll be even a little more subtle once I pour my last clear coat. There's one thing I have to do before I can pour the clear and it's super not fun. And that is painting the edges. I'm going to take my camera down from my tripod and see if there's a way that I can get a good shot of that for you guys. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a close up of the edge of my work here. You'll also see the mess that is my workspace. I've got the entire piece now. I'll show you. I turned around here. I've got the entire piece leaned up against the table that it was sitting on because I'm painting the edge. I'll show you the edges first. I am really pleased with how well my painter's tape came off. There's a couple little spots where it's still stuck. I have scraped at it. So what's left is, um, oops, sorry, trying to get to focus. What's left in those little bits is really stuck there by resin, but that's okay. If it's stuck down with resin, it means I can just paint over the top of it because I'm gonna let the top clear coat pour over the top of everything. I have not worried about these pieces under the glass yet. That'll be the very last thing I worry about. I'm going to have to retape along this bottom edge before I do my clear coat because I want my clear to pour over and cover my gold paint, but I don't want it to get on the back. So I'll be retaping once I'm done with this. Um, again, this is really stuck down. I've sanded it a little so it's flat and I'll paint right over the top of it. But for the most part, my tape came off really well. So I'm going to see if I can do this one handed for just a second. What I'd like to show you is my technique for painting these edges. So again, I'm using my enamel paint. I've just got a thin brush. See if I can do <laughs> both of these at once. I'm going parallel to the edge of my resin and I'm just pulling. And what's nice about this paint is it almost acts like a paint and it almost acts like a resin itself. It kind of falls toward the resin and stops right at the edge. Um, just like how real resin, you know, comes to the edge of something and then it pools there. This is, gosh, I don't know if there's a good way to show you. Basically, when I paint this on, as it hits the edge of the resin, it stops. So I can get it really close and it will fill in that last little bit. This takes forever, so I am not going to video it, but I'm basically gonna go all the way along the top edge like this in each section, probably to the glass, and then I'll just paint and fill in the rest, and I'm gonna go all the way around that way. So it's gonna take quite a while. I will do it off camera. And then from there, we will do the last clear coat over the top of everything, and this will be finished. Before I put this canvas back down to do the last clear coat, just going to show you what I ended up with underneath my canvas. This is a half inch piece of foam that I got at Home Depot. I cut it into two pieces and that's what I had under there with the magazines originally. And I went back and I got another bigger piece and I cut it apart into two pieces and that's an inch thick. And that made it a little bit too tall compared to my canvas, but that was okay because I need the canvas to be up on a couple of tiles so that the resin that ran over didn't all puddle and stick straight to the bottom of the canvas. I'm going to get my canvas back in place on the ground one more time and make sure it is completely level and then I will show you how the edges turned out and I am going to do, yay, my final clear coat and this will be done. Here's a quick view of my edge now that it's painted. I used the enamel paint in gold. And like I said, it almost works a little like resin where it kind of flows around to where you want it and you can use your brush to push it to the edge. So I've got this laying back down. See, there's a tiny gap in between the floor and the piece itself. On this last section, I am going to let the resin run over the edges to make sure that this gold is all protected 
and sealed in. And I'm purposely doing this at three in the afternoon because about six hours from now, I will come back down once this is sticky and run my fingers along here and get all the drips off. I did retape. The tape is just underneath here, all along the bottom edge, because I want to peel the tape off, obviously, so that no resin comes to the back and I don't have any drips. So I'm not gonna do all this on camera, only because there's no reason for you to watch me pour clear resin. I am gonna just tell you briefly, though, real quickly, one technique I have for doing clear resin on a piece this size. I'm so happy with how this turned out. You're getting a little preview here, but I'll also give you a final view of everything. I've already asked the person purchasing this if I can take pictures and video once it's hanging up, so you'll get to see it in its final state. The one thing I'm gonna change is this big section here. I've been planning this all along. I have a really tiny version of the blue color glass. This is much smaller. I believe I got this at Michael's years ago, but it's that same kind of like denim dusty blue color, only very tiny. And I'm just going to sprinkle some of it in this section. Uh, the one thing I do when I am pouring clear resin is I take it in sections on something this size. This is really easy in this one because I have so many glue lines. Uh, so for example, if I'm pouring this area, I will start here. I will pour all the way to the end of it and make sure then as I look through it that all of the things in this section are completely covered and sealed. The other thing I'm going to do is use my fingers a lot in this section because I do want resin to coat the top of all of my glue lines. The enamel paint is nice and looks good and I'm not going to do so much resin that those lines aren't sticking up but I need there to be a tiny bit to protect that because glue gun glue itself with the paint is not gonna hold up for years like I need it to. So I'm gonna do this off camera and then I will give you a final shot of the whole thing. Real quickly before the final reveal, I just wanted to show you how this turned out on the back. My tape came off pretty cleanly. Stuff's a little scruffy back there, but I really don't care. I also, for the customer, added these felt pads. I'll show you here. I added felt pads in each of the corners and then in the middle where that cross brace goes across so that it won't ding up their wall or anything if they accidentally bump the canvas on their wall. Okay, here comes the final reveal. My piece of art is finished. It was a total of 27 hours of work and I am so very happy with how this turned out. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. I'm just going to show you little bits here of everything up close now that it's done. These were those little pockets of opal design that I included. You can see all my lines, both the Pasca paint lines and the glass lines and the glue gun lines. So here are all the different components all put together. This is a massive piece. Um, I haven't weighed it yet, but I will include it at the end. It's very heavy and it was hard to take it from my little basement art space up the stairs and bring it up here to get a good shot of it for you. I'm so happy though. Look how some of these colors have just mixed together beautifully and moved around beautifully and the combination of the glass and the paint lines and the super fun glitter. I'm just so happy with this piece. Keep showing as we go. As always, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you watching my videos and supporting me in that way. It means a lot to me, especially if you stuck it out all the way to the end because this is probably the longest video I've ever done. Please be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. You know that helps me very much. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.
I'll try to see if I can get a photo of this once it's installed at my customer's house. This is probably one of my most fun projects ever. I'm so glad I redid that big section of it because I think it just turned out exactly how it was supposed to. Don't ever be afraid to completely change things up halfway through. Oh, and there's that little bit of glass that I added at the end there. To add that little bit of color. All right. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out my channel for some other fun videos and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.